Hello and welcome to another On Location episode. We are in Arizona today at Pico Show State, Pico Show Peak State Park. Um, we have some mountains behind me. I did not climb them even though I feel like I did. <laughs> it's a very hot day. Um, what we'll do today very briefly is look at this westernmost battle of the War of the Rebellion and what took place here in central Arizona. When Henry Sibley's invasion force reached Mesilla, which was effectively the capital of the pretend rebel state of Arizona, they occupied the area, gave credence to that experiment, and then a small contingent under Sherrod Hunter, about 120 rebel horsemen, peeled off to the side to make their advance into what is modern day Arizona. Um, Tucson was their main target, as we saw in a previous video. We actually had a convention in Tucson that also voted for secession. And they were to come here into this area, credits to the rebel state, and then of course also occupy this area, protect the flank rebel forces, and potentially take this conflict once victory is achieved in New Mexico proper all the way over into California. Now this area in particular here, Pikachu Peaks Pass, however you want to define this, is crucial because here is where the advance guard of Huntress' force will be located. And coming from the west is Carlton's about 2,300 Californians who are coming here, both cavalry and infantry, push the forces of the rebels out of Tucson and then to make their way over to Mesilla and liberate New Mexico from rebel forces. Behind me is what is sometimes called Pikachu Pass. The hills are behind us and behind the camera I should say. The pass here is where the westernmost engagement of the American War of the Rebellion takes place. Um, we're about 50 miles from Tucson. Phoenix is following the interstate and the modern railroad lines to the northwest. The engagement here is between uh, Lieutenant James Barrett and Sergeant Henry Holmes. Barrett is on the U.S. side, part of the California Column. Uh, Holmes has come up with a few men from Tucson to guard this area and give advance notice. The engagement takes place on April 15, about three weeks after the Battle at Glorieta Pass, which we have looked at in a previous video. Where exactly in this valley 
behind us, the battle took place, we actually don't know. Um, Barrett, who actually will die here, is also buried anonymously somewhere in this region as well. But we also do not know where exactly that is, unfortunately. It's a battle that we know very little about, especially when it comes to location. The engagement in total involved about 23 individuals, 10 on the rebel side, 13 on the US side. Holmes and his man had camped out here. Baird and his man coming in from the other side located this camp and instead of waiting on reinf reinforcements, Barrett decided to charge into the rebel encampment and bring fighting, fight to them. Again, we're talking 23 men, but the records say that they're engaged in over an hour of fighting, skirmishing, exchanging gunfire of some sort, at which point the rebels withdraw then to Tucson. The US forces will stay in this region for a little while before they also then make their advance on the city, finding it evacuated by the rebels, easily taking it over. At the end of the day, Barrett, the commander of the US forces engaged, was dead. Five of his men were also casualties. Of the 10 rebels, five of them also were casualties good number of them captured. That's 50% of their fighting force. 11 of the 23 men engaged in this battle, quote unquote battle, are either dead, captured, or wounded. Yes, this is the westernmost battle of the Wars of Rebellion. This is one of the smallest engagements with 23 men involved. But considering almost 50% of the men are also dead, wounded, or missing, or captured, it is also one of the most deadliest and devastating engagements of the War of the Rebellion at the same time. There's not much more to say with regard to the battle. We'll take now a little trip. There are actually a couple of monuments and we'll look at those. We're standing here in the final aspect of the Pikachu Peak State Park with regards to the Wars of Rebellion Memorial section. Um, we have a Mount Howitzer here, right in front of us. And the park itself, just as a brief word, was created in 1965, um, primarily for the natural aspects, of course, um, and unbeknown, of course, also the battlefield. There are already at that state monuments that we have. We have over there, and I'll have a picture for that, a monument to the Mormon Battalion. The Historical Society for the State and the Railroad have erected over there a monument to the man who died here from the U.S. side. And <clears throat> at the time of the park's creation, the spot that you can probably vaguely see there, um, not as dark, suffering from the sun of Arizona, there also was a UDC-sponsored memorial here, and I'll put a picture of that as well. In 2020, this thing was stolen, and it was not returned here. It isn't replaced, and in large part, the state has decided that this message of the lost cause that the UDC was sending with this memorial didn't fit anymore. And instead of kind of leaving it empty and blank, they actually did a nice little timeline there with regards to the American Civil War Wars Rebellion for us here. So the, they're, they're starting to shed a somewhat here their lost cause heritage on this side. Now I'm going to head into cooler climates because this is atrociously hot and I hope you had a little bit of a nice view here with regards to the Pikachu Pikachu, Pikachu um, battlefield and we'll continue the series one more time with Fort Craig then in a few weeks.